the first thing is that when you raise the age of retirement for Jawans from 17 and 19 years to 19 and 21 years, you really save on two things. You save on additional costs of training and you save on pension costs. That will actually help the government. The other thing is that there's just far too much flab in the army is what the Sheikh Atkar committee report says. And this of course comprises, the, rip, uh, the report was put together by retired generals. Uh, military farms, this is something that could have been sensible in the 50s. But there is no point in getting Jawans to milk cows or whatever when they can be in the front fighting the enemy. Secondly, something like the remount veterinary corps. Now, what is it that for? That is to uh, help horses and look after mules. Now, beyond very, very few areas now, uh, which cannot be reached by helicopter and cannot be reached by the roads which are reaching right up to Jammu and Kashmir, the Ladakh uh, line of actual control and uh, right up to the border in Arunachal, there are very, very few, few places where you need mules. So why do you need a remount veterinary corps? Why do you need uh, officers and men, serving officers and men of the national, uh, in the National Cadet Corps, in the NCC? Sure, this report says that the NCC should be expanded. But what is the NCC for? It's Shinjoy, not a frontline force. Shinjoy, All you need are retired officers and men. Shinjoy, yes. uh, more importantly, what, what perhaps yes, it focuses uh, yes. is that you you make the support functions leaner, make the frontline stronger. Uh, you talked about the retirement age, about 60,000 Jawans uh, retire every year and to give them jobs, to rehabilitate them, that's also a cost. How much does the government plan to save by this? A and and what, by when is it likely to come into effect? Well, to answer your, to take your second question first, uh, Manohar, it's a 600 page report and currently Manohar Parikar is looking at it. He has given it to his joint secretaries and the defense secretary to look at it. A report on this uh, uh, will come up very shortly after which the, the decisions will be taken piece by piece. For instance, abolition of uh, military farms. Do we go with it or not? Uh, increase the age. Do we go with it or not? Do we take out all serving officers from the NCC? Do we uh, reduce the size right. of the EME? Yes, no. Yes, no. That issue will take time. Also, it more than money, uh, uh, Anand, what it will ensure is that you have armored regiments with 12, 13 officers. Mm. You have infantry battalions with 12, 30 officers. And now you have all these officers and men sitting in the military farms. You have all these guys uh, in the rebound veterinary corps. You have people in the NCC. Why do you need them there? Make sure that they go to frontline positions, to frontline military areas. If you are knocking off 100,000 people, which is one estimate, from all these uh, right. uh, uh, places, right. so, so then you actually have five divisions of the Indian Army right. in, a, in a technical, uh, mathematical sense. Right. Shinjo Chaudhary, thank you for your inputs. Please stay on with us. Let's, uh, uh, and you've you brought us this exclusive here on the News Hour. We also have Maruf Raza and Major General Sadbi Singh joining us on this broadcast and on this newscast. Maruf, first coming across to you, uh, th there is something called the teeth to tail ratio. And which is somewhere we are given to understand as per this proposal is somewhere around 50-50 and that's not a healthy ratio to have. And is that what the, uh, the government proposes to correct if they were to implement this, this proposal? You see, Anand, uh, Shinjo has brought out a lot of important points, but let me sort of put it in context. At least for the last 30 years or more, the Indian Army has been battling with a very high tail ratio vis-a-vis -vis the teeth ratio. Most armies have a teeth to tail ratio. But most armies do not have such a long logistic tail as the Indian Army has, partly because of a structure that the Army inherited at independence uh, at a time when the operational environment, and that's the second point I wish to raise, that the operational environment until the early 70s was a completely different operational environment. We were looking and preparing for and fighting uh, conventional wars every five to ten years, which required us to have uh, a system in place and where technology was not that easily available, heli lift was not that easily available for rations and troops, right. evacuation of troops from battlefield areas were not that easily available and vehicles that were available to the army, many of them had 
been coming in from some kind of foreign collaboration which therefore needed a kind of electrical mechanical uh, engineers uh, eme core to manage those vehicles because uh, the fact was that that technology didn't exist with the supplier here today bulk of the vehicles available with the army are indian made and the same right. company that provides you service stations on the road side can also provide you service station for the army with a little bit of supervision from the army so there has been a desire on the part of the army to cut down the tail in the uh, 90s the general malik at his time had once announced as army chief that they were looking at doing away with about 50000 personnel which means not sacking people that cannot be done in a structure like the army and like you could in the corporate yeah. sector but making sure once they retire that you don't take the same people in so you create a leaner force the aim has been over the years to have a more fighting combat centric armed right. forces now the point that sinjo right. raised about the raising of color service they call it color service in the services which mean that if you serve as a jawan you can serve minimum 17 years and as you go up in promotion to naik havaldar 2 to 3 3 years get added on now that color service can be easily expanded upon because the operational environment now requires less josh but more hosh if i was to use what the ustads teach you in the army which means that you need to be more matured in your responses especially in an insurgency situation right. and as we right. have seen that the rashtri rifles has performed a commendable job in jammu and kashmir many of them are made up of people of much much higher age group and seniority and the last point i wish to make that the army has been battling a shortage of 12 to 13000 officers for at least two decades mm. now when you do away with the officers not going to these arms and services that exist like the rvc and the ame and military farms etc automatically not these same guys who've been mending farms and animals for all these years they can't take on a combat role you have to have a different training mindset and different aptitude to be a combat soldier right. but the next lot which will get commission from the academy you will have more That's vacancies right. in combat That's right Maruf Maruf uh, there's and also a statement army, yeah, from so the, uh, the is... defense minister Manohar Parikar that we have to keep in mind he just uh, said last week that reform process is on the anvil and that's going to cause a saving of about 20000 crore for the armed forces uh, let me take that question to major general sadbir singh major general sadbir singh the fact that a uh, couple of years extra to junior commanding officers the fact that their uh, uh, employment increases uh, reduction in training facilities uh, and the fact that they can work on in more combat roles for a longer period of time all of this does it fit in with the present uh, uh, thought process as far as this entire issue is concerned or do you think is just if it is just to save on pensions that this move is being made then it really isn't that great an idea Now I got I would like to take this subject in a very serious manner. Uh you know military is the last bastion of the nation. The democracy drives its authority from the military strength. Now when we look at the military um the points given by Maruf I am happy that he has done the dissection well and I feel privileged and proud that I have been his instructor. in the indian military academy that he has uh, learnt his basics well mm. however as a military man who has put in also about 40 years of service i would like to make some suggestions one is basically uh, i slightly disagree with my with maruf on the age uh, increasing by 2 years or 3 years or 4 years look at it you have reduced the age of commanding officers from now 13 years to 15 years of service which means 36 to 37 years is a commanding officer of a battalion of a regiment but you will have a jawan who will be 42 years 37 38 to 42 and naik a havalda will go up to 49 years which they have to be the cutting edge of the of the military the infantry the artillery the armor corps Then right. you take the JCOs, which are not superdar. Hold on, let me just say a few words. Uh, the JCOs who are the platoon commanders, which have to be along with the platoon going right up to the peaks. They will go to 51 and 53 years. And keeping in view, though, 
the age expectancy having slightly been increased however the kind of terrain which we still serve in i feel this increasing in age and making the army from younger to an aged army is not in the interest of our country just to save money on pensions right. it is not the money which is major general sadbir singh it is the operational I appreciate no, it is, no, appreciate no, no, no. sir sir i have we have one second, of time so this this question this 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 entire issue is just breaking right now here on time operational now. efficiency we'll continue, should we'll dictate we'll continue the we'll continue the dialogue the, this, the the debate and also the various angles that emerge we have to tell our viewers that each point of the proposal will be weighed will be uh, will be considered on merit both points of view will be uh, will be taken into consideration before a decision is arrived at this is just a proposal by the shekhatkar committee which is now tabled with the defense ministry and it is under consideration and your points are very lo logical uh, major general sadbir singh some of the points raised in the in the proposal also make sense at the end of the day it has to be that we have more teeth and less tail and if that can be worked out without uh, you know uh, harming the interests of anybody and more imp most importantly the security of our country and our uh, and india then most welcome thank you very much for joining us this evening on the news are winding up no but one only wi last winding up the story on that note to the secretary give it to the military right right sir we all points under consideration we'll carry the story forward but we have to wind up for the moment